Hello and welcome to another video of the IT Career Guide YouTube channel. In today's video I want to talk about the traditional way to get into information technology, specifically IT infrastructure, and then an alternative way or many alternative ways how you can get into IT infrastructure and become a systems administrator as an example. In this video really I want to go into that detail. First of all I will lay out how you could get into IT the traditional way. So here I'm briefly showing the traditional way how you can get into IT. And uh, there are a couple options here. Um, first of all, the foundation is really education and then potentially um, a, a complemented with a good IT certification. So the education, the college education is really the um, main foundation and then the certification already specializes your knowledge um, in certain areas. I don't want to say it turns you into a subject matter expert, but um, you get the idea, it gets you into that direction. So from there, we're looking at, okay, how do you get into IT? And for many, many people, it's really the first step by going through a help desk job. So that could be working on the phone and remotely helping customers, users with their IT related problems, or working more in an on-site capacity where you go to the user's desk or where you provide um, IT services, IT support within an office building in person. So from there, as your knowledge grows and your work experience grows, um, you can work towards IT certifications that get you ready for the first systems administrator job. And in most cases, it really gets you to a junior systems administrator. And uh, that's really a good and solid start because you really want to have that foundational knowledge. In the end, that will really catapult you up um, into the higher paying jobs, into the more challenging jobs, really where um, the rubber hits the road and where I want to say the most interesting work within IT infrastructure is. So the certifications uh, get you ready for that and then the next step really is uh, getting that job. Hopefully you can do this within an organization where you already work, but quite often just be aware you have to change companies and find that next job with a different employer. The good thing there is when you change companies, in many cases, your salary can go up significantly. So we're talking 20, 30, 40, even 50% when you come from a help desk position and you get into systems administration. Of course, it depends really on your knowledge, where you live, um, the overall salary um, map, I want to say, or salary structure in that area where you live. Once you get into your first systems administrator job, really take the time and learn. Um, like I said, this it, it will be the foundation for a really strong career down the road. Spend some time, go through the ropes, become a mid-level systems administrator. And um, as you get towards that mid-level systems administrator um, uh, position, I want to say, already think about what will your next step be. So if you don't know where you're going, how can you be successfully getting there? So I'm, what I'm saying is you need to map out your career. So the first step really is mapping out learning, studying, education, help desk, and then junior systems administrator. From there, you just learn and you build up expertise. You potentially become a subject matter expert and you move towards that mid-level um, area from an experience perspective. But once you are at that mid-level, um, you really want to think about where are you going? What is the, the world looking like around you? And um, quite a few people really forget about that and they just do their generic systems administrator work and there's nothing wrong with it. But guess what? Um, technology around you is catching up quickly. There's more automation, there are more sophisticated systems and uh, suddenly you're the weakest link of the chain um, by being just, and I put just in quotes, a generic systems administrator. So you really want to think about specializing your knowledge in certain areas. Um, I mean, be it that you become a cloud expert or a storage expert or whatever else. Or if you want to position yourself towards IT management, even that 
um, you need to start early on because it is a journey. It's not just uh, flim uh, simply throwing a switch and suddenly you're an IT manager. So you need to plan it out. And from that mid-level at the latest, you really want to look which way to go, uh, which area do you have most of your interest in? What does the market demand look like? I mean, you can specialize in something that will be obsolete in three years. So what good is that? So look at technologies and from my personal experience I've always jumped onto the latest and greatest technology as early as possible. So um, virtualization as an example, a long long ways before cloud, internal cloud and, and so on um, really became a term, I jumped onto uh, virtualization and uh, became an expert very early on and it helped me um, for seven, eight years in my career before I had to make that next uh, readjustment and find another spot because virtualization at that point had become a generic commodity. Uh, the vendors really um, made it so much easier that even uh, a less educated person was able to do quite complicated things. They might not have understood how certain things work. They didn't have that base knowledge, but just by clicking on a nice, easy to use GUI, um, yeah, you know how that is. So think about that expertise that you want to build up. Look forward into the future as much as you can. And that's where you want to go because those are the jobs that carry on. And um, you have to expect over the course of your career that uh, you have to make these adjustments every five to eight years approximately, depending on how fast technology is evolving around you. So it's a very important thing to keep your eyes on the road in a certain way and um, look for new trends. Um, where are the salaries going? So in some areas, salaries are going up quickly because there's a high demand for that knowledge and there are very few people. So that will drive up prices. Um, it keeps you employed. Um, there's really a, a great level of job security when you are in one of those areas um, because suddenly you're one of the first there and um, when the demand picks up, uh, you can pick and choose or employers are coming to you. I mean, I really had companies knocking on my door that wanted to hire me uh, when I was um, early on in that special, special area with virtualization as an example. So that's the traditional path. But now let's look at some non-traditional ways to get into IT infrastructure. So um, non-traditional ways, um, really, let's say you go to college, you learn something or you don't go to college and you just have a job and uh, now you want to get into IT. How do you do that? So first of all, there's no uh, way around it. You have to educate yourself and ideally you want to work on IT certifications, which often builds a framework for your education. So you don't necessarily need to go to college or take an expensive training course. No, the certification gives you a framework where you can study and where you can look for resources and uh, really educate yourself. So educate yourself is the key here. Um, this is really the, the almost the path for traditional and non-traditional ways into IT. So just Keep that in mind, but you do not necessarily need a college education. That might come in helpful later on and maybe you do your college degree later on or you specialize and get an IS or an IT uh, college degree down the road. But initially, um, no certifications and the studying related to them that can open the doors and get you your first job. It's often um, really building that foundation as mentioned and um, it's a well-known path. There are quite a few hiring managers that came the same way and that um, see people that are hungry for that uh, work, that are, that are willing to work hard and they know they are motivated and uh, there's a great opportunity really to get in there. So education, certifications as your first step. Then help desk. So first of all, help desk again is often a starting point. So don't underestimate the uh, power of uh, getting a help desk job, building up some knowledge and then making the jump into systems administration as an example. So let's say you are, uh, you're working as a customer service uh, representative that could be on the phone, that could be in person somewhere, it doesn't really matter, um, or even in, in retail sales in a certain way, or in a bank uh, behind the counter, so some sort of customer service. And now you combine this skill, because it is a skill, with an IT certification. So um, if you learn, of course, the basics for help desk work, call center or on-site, and you combine this, it gives you a great starting point. So just by adding a certification to your existing work experience. So I, as an example, I worked in a call center 
um, for a shipping company and I did those IT certifications on the site and that skill of, of great customer service um, and being able to stay patiently on the phone and wa walking somebody through a complex situation really helped me to get my first IT job uh, just a few months later. So it's really a good skill and uh, you need to show that on your resume and if you combine it with a certification uh, the doors are wide open. It's, your, it's up to you to take those opportunities. So if you don't work in this field then um, you can still um, obtain subject matter expertise and subject matter expertise might be a little stretching it but um, you can build your own computers and uh, become the tech support guy for your family, um, the neighborhood, whatever, your school. Um, there are many different ways to build up that expertise. And again, you combine it with a certification, you showcase it correctly on your resume, the doors are wide open. Um, another option is if you are a top performer at the company where you work, try to make an internal switch. So um, if the company knows you're a hard worker, you know the field, you know the industry and whatever it is, and you express the interest, I would like to get into IT, um, you will be surprised. There might be an easy way within the company to switch and they might even then provide that internal training. So they know that you're not that um, experienced, but you have experience within the company. Let's say with certain applications, people know you, there's a trust factor. And um, that can be really a great way um, to move into IT. It is critical that you are a top performer, in my opinion, in that other job, in that other field within the company. And then uh, you can also look at boot camps or training classes that offer a placement service. That placement service is where these um, providers have existing contracts with other companies and they place you on a help desk um, where you get your first work experience. It might not be the best job, it might not be the best paid job, but um, it gives you that experience. You're kind of paying for it, um, but they help you with that placement service and uh, specifically in call centers um, there is a high turnover. People don't want to stay on the phone usually for more than a year and then move on into a more hands-on position or want to move up. So the next step is the uh, junior systems administrator. So how do you go from, from zero to junior systems administrator bypassing the help desk? Again, that could be combining work experience with certifications. And then you have to sell yourself correctly. So you have to build your resume. And um, if you are in a technical field of some sort, um, try to stretch, I don't want to say stretch the truth, um, there needs to be a connection to systems administration and sometimes it depends on the job description of these junior level positions. So, um, but the certifications are the key. That Those are what can make the scale tip towards you getting the job in IT or not. So certifications, but you want to pick different certifications compared to a help desk. So pick something for like cloud technologies or operating system, server operating system, anything in that field. So the certification areas are different. Again, you can um, really uh, go the same path, become a subject matter expert, combine it with certifications and do the same thing. Again, it needs to be geared towards a junior systems administrator. So read the job descriptions because that gives you a good path of what, no not what knowledge do I need to be um, acquiring? Where can I become a subject matter expert by doing something at home? Um, build your own lab at home with servers and uh, switches and network and educate yourself. So when you walk into an interview and you can just rattle these things down and uh, back it up with a good certification, you're golden. Uh, again, you can use an internal employer to potentially make the switch. I'm not going into too much detail here. Again, I think you need to be a top performer in your uh, position, so just be aware. And then internships as the last option here. Um, internship really can get you that foot in the door in that actual area. So um, don't underestimate the power of an internship. Hopefully you get paid for it. Um, quite a few employers do that these days, but many still don't. So and then there are additional options. So you can work at an, a non-profit or a church and provide your services for free, build up experience, um, talk to the people there and ask for that referral or to be a reference for you or give you a letter of recommendation or that um, they are okay with you putting this on your resume so that they might be contacted as an employer of some sort. 
um, then you could also think about, okay, if I want to build up knowledge and trust and make sure that people understand who I am, try to become a public figure. So I'm not talking celebrity status, but um, start a blog, a vlog, or build a YouTube channel, um, go into forums and, and provide advice and really build up a good reputation. Um, so there is a lot of stuff where um, people worked as an example in the Microsoft support forums and um, became known as really the subject matter experts in that field. And suddenly they were invited maybe to conferences. And once you have these connections, one thing can lead to another. So don't underestimate the effort that you might put in um, can pay off down the road unexpectedly. And uh, being a public figure, um, that might really open the doors because everyone can see you in public and uh, verify who you are. And um, they get to know you on conferences or in uh, workshops or in live streams, whatever you do. So it's a powerful tool uh, to, to get into that area. Uh, you could start a business uh, as another option and hire the knowledge and then learn. Um, when I was in IT for about four years, um, I started my own site business and became a web host. And that web hosting experience helped me with networking and uh, domain name related um, items, DNS as well. So um, there was a lot of knowledge, inform information security, um, a web host needs to be very secure. So there was a lot of stuff going on that I had to figure out on my own and that knowledge that I acquired in my own business uh, helped me down the road really to be just a notch more educated than my peers and that helped me a lot to move forward. Uh, you could get into IT sales um, and uh, just uh, focus on the sales factor and then pick up IT as you go. Um, there are quite a few IT jobs um, in the sales area. There's pre-sales, post-sales, sales engineer um, and those companies often provide that subject matter expert training because they want you to appear really, really knowledgeable um, in those sales discussions. So that's a very good way to get into. It might take some convincing of the hiring manager that you are the right person and that you pick up that technology super quickly, but you could also go and educate yourself and then just ace the interview. And last thing, um, fake it till you make it. I'm not necessarily endorsing this, but if you have a knack for really being super quick on your feet and um, figuring things out on the fly, um, you might be one of those few that can go and fake it till they make it. Uh, you need to be able to talk your way through situations. You probably need to be super quick with Google searches, um, but it is possible. But um, I would say, if you, if you want to have a guarantee, that's probably the one at the very bottom that is not going to work out. So um, that is really just um, make sure that if you decide to go down that path, you really have what it takes. So that is not an easy one. You can combine it potentially with one of the other ones, but um, if you fail to fake it, um, the consequences will be that uh, you're tarnishing your reputation and um, that you will be kicked out of that IT company or wherever you, you're gonna work. So on that, depending on the area where you are, uh, could be career damaging for a long time. Companies and managers and people are networked. They talk to each other. So if you bomb completely, um, yeah, your reputation might be damaged beyond control. So just be aware. So I hope you like this video. This is really the traditional and non-traditional way how to get into IT systems administration. I'm pretty sure there are other ways. Um, if you are in systems administration, how did you get there? Please leave a comment below and, and share your experience. So I hope you liked this video. Please give it a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so. I really appreciate it. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye bye.